Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today we are going to disassemble the Inmotion V12 production model and check its quality. So if you want to see if the Inmotion V12 screams quality from the inside, as it seems to be from the outside, well then, let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. So let's get right into it, and thanks to InMotion providing a guide on the internet, which is a quick time lapse of opening up the wheel, it was relatively easy to follow along, but still I had some hurdles along the way. To open up the side panels, you actually don't need to remove the pedals and the pedal hangers, but for the sake of this video I'm going to disassemble them anyways. Removing the pedals is relatively easy with just one hex screw at the bottom. There's a big amount of hex screws in this wheel, which I really like. And then you just need to hammer out the rod, which is holding the pedal in place. We can also find some questionable metal quality spacers in there. So be careful when hammering the rod back in, not to damage those spacers. The Emotion V12 is one of just two wheels that I know of with adjustable pedal height. And in this wheel, it's really easy to adjust the pedal height too. There's three slots you can select for your pedal height. My favorite one is uh, the upper one and just four hex screws holding this metal bracket in place. So if you ever want to change the pedal height, if you usually ride at lower setting and then you want the higher one for off-road, it just takes five to 10 minutes, maximum 15 minutes to change it out. The aluminum metal piece that holds on to the pedal seems robust quality and the screws are also pretty beefy. I also didn't have any problem with removing the screws or inserting them, even with dirt or some dust inside of the threads. Everything seems pretty good. It doesn't really look for me as a very sturdy construction, but hey, for me it was working fine. Taking a closer look at the pedals, they're made out of aluminium, they're very light. I suppose they're durable, but I don't think they're the most durable on the market. I would definitely throw in some Nilonova on there with spikes, uh, that will, would just do the job much better. The grip tape is okay, but I think the design of the pedals is really antiquated. It's really dating from the V10F and just adding some improvements. As an FYI, my V10F pedal broke and I heard other people also uh, having an issue with breaking pedals on Emotions, but with this iteration, maybe it's good, maybe it's not. I don't know. I'd really love to see a updated design with spikes for a pro wheel that Emotion is releasing. Next up, we remove the side pads, which are just held in by friction and plastic. Pretty cool. Maybe there will be future accessories, which would also fit with this bracket. They're really squishy and nice, and the position is awesome on the wheel. Probably my favorite upper pads on a wheel yet. And behind those pads, there's screws. And believe me, there will be a lot of screws in this video. All of those screws are hex screws, uh, which have a thread designed for plastic, so that's all right and they're pretty beefy. However, maybe the metal could be just a bit um, stronger, just a bit uh, harder, because after getting them out and in a couple times, I feel like the screw heads were getting a bit loose, even though I was using the right tools for the job. After we remove those 10 screws that hold the side panel in place, we can lift it off. And interestingly enough, it's actually see-through. I didn't know about that. Uh, it's pretty robust too, pretty strong, thick plastic, but it's also pretty tinted and dark. So it turns out that the LEDs and the V12 are actually very, very strong, as you can see when the wheel stands without any side cover on. But once you put the side cover on, they become really dim. So I think that a clear version of a V12 will be really awesome and it would greatly improve the safety of the wheel because as it is now, those lights do not help you a lot in the night to be seen. I always ride around with an additional bicycle light on the back because, well, I, I need to be seen on the road in the night. So once we have removed the side panels, there's a bit of dust in the, this compartment, but the battery is actually secured with another layer of plastic encasing. Really, really nice. And just the ca cables go out from a silicone um, exit at the upper part of the battery cover and the wires go through to the axle. The V12 could really have a nickname Onion because there's so many layers to this wheel. 
Anyways, as with every new plastic cover removed, there's more screws hidden underneath hidden screws. So now we can remove the front and back panel, which also include the bumper. It's really cool that both of these pieces are modular, so just in case the front bumper or the rear bumper breaks, you can just replace the whole piece. And of course, everything is held in together by those longer plastic screws. One thing I would notice in the meantime is that the motor wiring is not the thickest and there's already some uh, cuts on the isolation layer around the wire, which is not really good to see. Hopefully they improve that in further batches. All of these outer elements, that is the front panel, the back panel and the upper panel with the handle are tied in together with screws and also hooks. So you need to have a screwdriver to lift off the flimsy side plastic piece and then you need to do it on the other side as well and then they can slide out. It wasn't really straightforward for me at the beginning but, but after repeating this process it's pretty straightforward. It's really cool that those panels also do not include any electronics, they're just plastic and the bumper so replacement parts shouldn't be expensive. You can also notice the holes there which are designed for the speakers. And speaking of speakers, there's not one not two speakers in the wheel, there's four speakers with passive radiators in the front and the back total. So yeah, that's what gives the V12 the pretty good sound. Moving on with the disassembly of the onion and of course crying a bit while doing so, we need to remove another four screws which hold on the trolley handle and the upper panel to the shell of the wheel. After that we also do need to remember about those plastic hooks, we need to pop them up to remove the upper panel. The great part about this upper panel and the included screen and power button there is that there is actually no wire connecting it to the shell of the wheel. There's just one contact point with many contact pins that sends information to both the monitor and the button. Pretty cool and easy to open up. Most of the stuff here is also gooped up to make it watertight. And here you can see the contact pins for the monitor and the power button on the shell side of the wheel. There are also the phase wires on the top and the battery connectors are on the bottom. Everything is held in place with additional aluminium brackets in the middle so the wires don't go flying around. And yeah, it all looks pretty clean. You, you actually don't need access to the motherboard to remove both the battery wiring and the phase wiring of the motor. So you could for example change a motor. All of the sockets that you can see on the top are actually not waterproof which is a bummer and they're actually quite easy to destroy with a bit too much pulling. However, the cool thing about those sockets on the top is that there is an additional layer of rubber sealant that I will show you later and uh, the speakers, the lights, uh, the charge port connector, all of those units can be replaced with actually no need of getting the motherboard out because the connectors are just placed on the top and the modules can be easily replaced. Getting into the motherboard is really tricky on this wheel, so we'll go we'll get into that a bit later. But as but as far as it goes for a tire change, it's actually not that hard. It's a fair amount of screws, but still doable. Moving on, I will unplug the battery wires. Both batteries are connected to the motherboard separately with a XT90i, I believe, plug. So a pretty solid plug. A pretty solid wiring as well. I like it. In the same vicinity there's also the charge port connector as well as the BMS connectors. Pretty straightforward, accessible and additionally there's also a rubber seal gasket sort of thing over all of these wires which additionally protects them from water ingress. Although these parts are already like under two layers of plastic. Next up I can disconnect the phase wires which go into the motor and the hull sensor wire which is also there. Um, all of these wires are also additionally gooped in silicone for additional levels of uh, water ingress protection and they go out all at the same time here in my case. So yeah, that's that. The connectors are very big and beefy, actually beefier than what you see on Gotways. However, um, the wires as said before rather thin and especially the insulation material is not my favorite. Also, if you would ever need to make a tire change, which with this tire would be probably around three to 4,000 kilometers, you will need to remove the silicone from those wires and then reapply it again when reassembling the wheel. Then I proceed to disconnect all of the small connectors which are on top of the motherboard. 
There's no need to do that in a tire change though. I, I did it because I want to disassemble the wheel totally to show you guys what the, what's the quality like. Here you can see an example of a connector that I pulled off both with the socket from the motherboard. So be careful with those. I managed to put it back in and everything works fine, but it's a bit tricky. Here I proceed to remove the Phillips head screws on the top of the motherboard cover. Don't do that in that order. These are meant to be removed last because they hold on to the top stacked motherboard in the V12. After that, I proceed to remove the screws which hold the pedal hanger to the shell of the wheel. They're also really tightly screwed in and a good surprise I had on this wheel is that a lot of these threaded screws had Loctite. Now a couple of them had just a bit not enough, especially the ones here on uh, um, the pedal hanger. I had to uh, re reapply a bit more Loctite after reassembling the wheel, but a lot of the screws were um, fitted with Loctite or pre-applied with Loctite, so most of these screws will not be falling out of its own and the plastic screws are also pretty tightly in their threads um, on this wheel. Then I proceeded to remove the battery pack to show you guys how that looks like and the battery pack was also held in place with threaded screws which also had Loctite so this was pretty solidly attached. Now this is one part of the 875 watt hour pack so one of two on this wheel it's really solidly made, I like it, um, yeah, that's just how a pack on an electric device should look like, and it also has a solid BMS, pretty cool. And it's also secured by, as again, another layer of plastic from the inside. One thing I didn't see on the packaging though is the cell manufacturing and model, so I guess they're LG, I don't know. After removing another six hex screws from the other side of the wheel, I was able to take out the motor. And there's also a decent gap on the side for the motor wires to get through. So yeah, that's pretty straightforward. However, it's a bit more difficult than in other wheels because here you have the wiring on both sides and then you also need to remember um, which direction the motor goes in because uh, usually it's just one side so you can't go wrong but here you need to remember which wires were on which side so you don't mess that up. Now let's inspect the motor and the hangers a little bit closer. Um, as you can see it's not a hollow motor so presumably no problems with bearings and you can also see on the bottom that there's a nice triangular shape um, for added strength of the hangers and probably also added lightness. Um, there's also an additional screw on the top for tightening uh, the axle. Uh, the axles here on my wheel are very tight, no need to tighten them up even more. It's just solidly made. Maybe one thing I noticed there, there were some couple brown spots on uh, this wheel. Not sure if it's rust or if it's uh, just some dirt on it, but I heard of one in motion having rust issues. Hopefully that's not the case and um, definitely I would say it's covered by warranty. And another small comment here is that the silicone on the motor and the isolation itself doesn't seem to be that robust. I reapplied more silicone onto the motor face wires on both sides when reassembling the wheel. To proceed with the disassembly, I removed another four screws, which were pretty long, holding the heatsink to the shell of the wheel. I also removed both battery packs and behind those packs were even more screws. I also removed the front light, which has a housing made out of metal and a radiator in the back, so that's pretty cool. Also a nice module, really easy to replace. I also removed the LED strips, which are actually labeled, so you can't go wrong. It says which one goes on which side, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And behind those, I removed the speakers. And behind all of those plastics are, of course, more screws. It's really satisfying to watch this modular onion being disassembled, but for me at that time it was quite tricky to figure everything out. And because most of the screws are black and the casing is black as well, it's easy to forget a couple screws and that was one of the biggest mistakes I did when trying to get the motherboard out. While we're at it, here's also the wheel well and there's silicone connecting two halves of the shell together. And there on the top you can see the radiator, which is a bit dirty. I'm curious how much dirt influences the heat dissipation of the system. Maybe sometimes it needs to be cleaned up. 
And finally, after separating the both halves of the shell, which probably I didn't need to do because uh, I forgot three screws that were still holding the motherboard in place, we got to see the motherboard and the massive heatsink that is in this wheel. As you can see, there is two separate parts to this motherboard and over the upper one there is a rubber layer. On the side, which is really innovative, the MOSFETs are placed directly on the heatsink and there is no motherboard on top of them. If you look at any other wheel, the MOSFETs are underneath the motherboard, which is not the best idea if you want to cool the actual device that brings you the power to the wheel, which is the MOSFET. Uh, so we do not see any fan here, so that's also really convenient and from my testing the V12 is running actually cooler than my veteran Sherman and the Sherman anyways is showing lower temperatures than it actually has because the temperature meter is I guess somewhere there, where there is no heat. I mean, I mean otherwise they wouldn't fry, right? Anyways I think this is a marvel of engineering. I think it's a very good idea what Inmotion had here with the stacked motherboard. There's also a couple of capacitors, but there's a lot of layers preventing water to get in. The motherboard is on the top. All of the connections look pretty solid. I love the idea of MOSFETs on the side. There's also a big seal underneath the motherboard, uh, which connects to the shell. So yeah, clap, clap. So to sum it all up, the Inmotion V12 is pretty solidly built. It's not really easy to disassemble and probably if you have any bigger issue I would recommend to send it to a service shop, but still it is doable. I like the overall quality, now screws could be a bit better, but still we are at a pretty high standard talking about Chinese products and just the side covers could be more see-through to allow better light to, more light to pass through and the motor wiring could be also improved but overall i think it's pretty solidly built definitely the water resistance is also there uh, there's the ipx7 for the batteries and ipx5 for the whole thing so yeah i guess that's it and if you're still here leave a like on the video subscribe to see more content like this i'll see you in the next video see you soon